Aviation consultant Ken Jenkins joining us. Ken? Hey, good morning. How are you? Good morning, I'm Ken. Good, thank you. Good. Where are you based, Ken? Dallas, Texas. And uh, your credentials as a consultant for the aviation industry? Well, um, I have a master's degree in aeronautical science. I've been in the aviation industry for 30 years, and I've responded to over 12 uh, fatal aircraft accidents. And uh, looking here, you've also uh, led multiple deployments and go teams and, and helping those folks uh, develop some of their command centers, on-site coordinating, and uh, also emergency management um, in, in these uh, extensive uh, uh, situations that we're seeing here in Paris. Yes, sir. Yes, and uh, also the news overnight that that uh, Russian plane indeed was downed because of a bomb. They found evidence of that on board. Uh, are you surprised by that? I, I'm not surprised by that. Um, based on the the early reports of what happened with that aircraft, I mean there there were a couple of other uh, things that could have happened, but um, it, with the wreckage that was found. Um, it would be pretty easy to determine pretty quickly, as we've seen in this case, and within 30 days, what may have brought the aircraft down. And I'm not surprised to see now that it was terrorism. How will what happened in France impact those of us here in the Mohawk Valley or elsewhere in the United States as we consider travel plans for the Thanksgiving holiday, the Christmas holiday, and beyond? Are we going to see any different security measures at airports? Well, I, and it's a good question. I think what you're, you're going to see are enhanced security measures. And to the to the, the person that travels every day, uh, say such as myself, I travel quite a bit. Um, I think what you'll notice is that there may be longer lines, obviously, as the holidays come across. But there are going to be some additional things that are actually happening behind the scenes that we don't see. Airlines, for example, have their own security protocols that they step up in situations like this, along with TSA and Homeland Security. Um, to the passenger, you may see some additional screenings like random searches at, during boarding of uh, personal belongings. I recently flew, for example, from Hong Kong back to the United States, and our flight was delayed for about an hour because of security measures. Uh, the aircraft was being searched, and then uh, as we boarded, all 300-plus passengers, all their hand luggage was searched before actually boarding the aircraft, and that was done right at the gate area. Now, will we see something like that here? That's doubtful, but um, I do think that you'll see more full-body scans going on, TSA agents talking with passengers to find out about their destinations. They'll be doing behavioral assessments, and these are all things that take place every day but will be stepped up in light of the holidays and what happened in Paris. How do you prepare for folks uh, in regards to uh, emergency uh, situations for travel or during travel? Well, for, are you referring to the airlines specifically or for passengers? Well, uh, I guess passengers, really. Well, for passengers, what I would say is, is to be very careful with what you pack, obviously. I mean, and this may come as a surprise to, to, to many, is that there are a number of people that will carry their firearm with them in, say, their backpack, and they forget that they have it in there, and they go to security, and then security finds the gun, and, you know, there you go. And... And so it's little things like that, which to me is not very little, but you know, be mindful of what you have. Um, don't take anything that's wrapped, like wrapped presents and things of that nature. Um, liquids need to be 3.4 ounces or less, as we all know. But those kinds of things are going to be really examined even more now in light of um, a homemade explosive that brought down that Egyptian airliner. So there's some precautions you can take up front to help make it easier for you as you go through security. You know, don't wear a lot of metal, for example, heavy metal belts or jewelry or things of that nature. It'll help speed you through security. And best of all, if you see anything that looks suspicious, bring it to the attention of someone at the airport, whether it's a uniformed uh, airline employee, a security person, uh, a gate agent or ticket agent. If it looks suspicious, call it out. Talking to aviation consultant Ken Jenkins on the Talk of the Town at 100.7 FM WUTQ. Uh, how about if a, a passenger or folks are in the middle of one of these emergencies? Any any uh, ideas or thoughts for them to prepare for for such uh, circumstances? Well, you know, in, in, as, as a safety person, I have to tell you, uh, even outside of uh, of what happened in Paris, for example, or the Egyptian airliner, just as a safety protocol, there are things that you can do when you're boarding boarding a plane, and I call it slide attire. If, if there was an emergency on board the plane and you had to jump down the slide, what are you wearing? 
if you're wearing shorts, you have the opportunity to possibly injure yourself more, burn yourself as you go down the slide. I wouldn't wear flip-flops. Anything like that, that that can come off. You want you know good shoes with laces to keep on your feet so that they don't come off if you go down the slide. So I think of things like that. Um, I also look at, as the flight attendants talk about, count the number of seats in front and behind um, from where you are to the nearest exit in case you needed to exit. Um, but most most recently, I think we saw an example on American Airlines where there were suspicious passengers on board. And passengers called that, whatever the suspicious behavior was, to the attention of the flight attendants who took that information to the cockpit. And that aircraft landed and the passengers were removed and the plane was searched before it was allowed to continue on its flight. That just comes straight back to that behavioral assessment. If something doesn't look right, bring it to somebody's attention. You're seeing uh, more stress among travelers these days and uh, maybe manifested in certain ways for travelers being aboard planes and creating disturbances aboard planes and things of that nature? Well, you know, and that's interesting. I, I saw, um, I, I left the airline industry, I was with American Airlines for 26 years, and when I left, the last four or five years of my tenure there, we started to see as an industry an uptick in, in air travel rage or as some would call road rage if you will mm -hmm. and and you know it, part of that is because as we all know planes are very cramped today one the seats are smaller two they're full all the time i mean there's there's very little room but there are other things that people can do such as and and these are just so, such simple tips like get to to the airport two hours before your flight and i know that time is precious but if you have that two hours you're going to get through security in plenty of time you have time to get a snack or a cup of coffee before you board the flight. It'll bring your anxiety level down. And just, you know, little things like if you're going to recline your seat, just ask the person behind you if they mind if you do it instead of slapping that seat back. They may have just put a cup of coffee down on that tray table. You slam back and that coffee goes over the person. It's just common courtesy things to help reduce the stress. Uh, security is probably the biggest aspect of, of the stress, waiting in line, having to take your shoes off, your belt off unless you're a TSA pre-approved traveler, um, which is something that you can do online through the TSA website uh, to become uh, one of those pre-screened travelers. So that's something you might do to help reduce your, your anxiety around security. Uh, but really just give yourself enough time. I get stressed about low cloud cover. I don't see how the pilots can negotiate those low clouds. I know they have instruments. That crash that occurred recently into the building in Ohio, have mm -hmm. they completed the investigation of that? I heard a rumor that it was due to the low cloud cover and uh, the visibility that existed at that airport that made it a challenging uh, approach for that particular pilot. Have you heard that as well? Well, I have heard that as well. Weather certainly is a consideration. Uh, with regards to that accident, the NTSB will always share with you that it'll take anywhere from six months to a year to even 18 months to complete its investigation. But uh, they announced very quickly in, in that uh, Akron, Ohio event that weather certainly uh, would be a consideration. And if you've seen that there's a video um, footage out that shows the plane, you can see it behind the houses coming in, and it seems to confirm some of the things that you were just saying with regards to uh, it was coming in too, too low at that point at its approach, um, and it could have been because of a visual approach. We're not sure if they were using instruments or visual approach at the time. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for your time, Ken. Very interesting stuff, and uh, I'd like to have you on call perhaps uh, during the rest of the holidays here if something oh. comes up. Well, thank you very much. It's nice talking with you gentlemen All today. Right.